All right, today I'm going to try and do a, a little tutorial on um, hand coding your qualitative data. A little bit about uh, preparing your data and kind of the layout that seems to seems to work. And so <clears throat> this will be really geared for those of you who like to to just read a piece of paper and scribble on stuff and um, write hand notes instead of sitting in front of the computer all the time. Out of that. Okay, so I have a uh, an actual piece of qualitative data from a prior research that I've done. If I can get rid of all these extra boxes, <clears throat> and what this is is a transcript of a um, uh, public presentation that was given by Archie Hoffman, Jean, Georgia Keene Jr., Bernard. Alba uh, and Harvey Manatachi, who are uh, who are giving a talk on traditional healing in a modern setting. So uh, down at the um, uh, CNA Health Board, the Cheyenne and Arapaho uh, Tribe of Oklahoma Health Board Conference. So uh, <clears throat> a little bit about my data. Uh, since this was a public presentation, uh, the concerns about Anonymity are a little bit different than had this been a, uh, a regular uh, uh, transcript, uh, so that's why I used it. So uh, there's a there's a little section in here where I make some notes. Uh, there were some introductions by B. A. Harvey uh, and Georgia Keene did a little talk, um, and then so uh, <clears throat> so there's just a few minutes before they got going, um, and then. A little comment that I made that it felt really nice and homey there, or a nice little family feeling. So, uh, and, and then it was after this that I, I said, "Is it okay if I re record this?" And they said yes. And so, so that's so right here is where the actual transcript starts. Is down here where where it says George. So, um, <clears throat> sometimes it's nicer to read s single space than it is to, s to read double spaced. I know sometimes if you're writing papers and you, your instructor wants them double spaced, sometimes you know a whole paragraph can take up a, a page and a half, and so you can kind of lose the flow of reading, and that that's particularly true uh, when you're reading something that is uh, a transcript, um, uh, because as you can see, this is kind of one long rambling thought, and uh, uh, <coughs> so. In order to accommodate this kind of data, one of the things that I like to do is to is to just simply print it out uh, and read it and make notes about it, rather than trying to go uh, put it into a qualitative pro, uh, software and code it in that way. Uh, but to make that a little bit easier, uh, I need to set up my transcript uh, or my data a little bit to make it more amenable to that. Uh, one of the things that I'd already done uh, since this was a recording, uh, I uh, just put in the name of the recording. So this is the name of the recording. So I can always find the original recording, and that'll be helpful a little later on in the in the in the, in the coding process. And so, um, um, before I print this off and take it off to the coffee house and swill coffee and. Um, uh, you know, read it and make notes about it, and do my qualitative analysis, my coding. Uh, I want to um, be able to uh, set it up to where I can always go back to this transcript and find out what I was talking about, which is a real important part of of, of the audit trail. But it's also an important part of your of your decision making process. And so, in order to do that, I just designed this little. Um, um, document. It's a little sheet, it's a little form, I guess you can call it, the best thing to call it, um, that has a few things, just a few things on it. Uh, up here at the top we've got uh, <clears throat> a box that you can fill in the project name, so you know this is a demo or something, I'll call it something. Uh, the date, now this isn't the date of the recording, it's the date that you're, you're doing your coding. You want to keep 
kind of a sequence of, of coding going. And so, and you can even perhaps put time in there if you like. Uh, that's, that's going to an extreme, uh, but uh, <clears throat> you kind of want to keep track of your thinking. And then the code. Uh, and then the location. Now this will be the location of the document, not the fact that this transcript happened in Oklahoma. Uh, because you want to be able to go back to your document to find the data. It will become clearer, I think, a little bit later. And then finally, some space to write a memo. And since this is all going to be written in, you know, this is, this is going to be designed to be used in, you know, regular old-fashioned writing things down with pen and paper or pencil or even using uh, highlighters. Uh, uh, you know, I put these really kind of light lines in here. We're not going to be typing this stuff in, so um, so I'll print that out. So I've got I, I need to know project name, which which I know, uh, date, code, location, and memo. So uh, I I need to set up my my transcript in order to to be able to track back to location in it. So. <clears throat> so let me go back to my document if it'll let me. Okay. Um, so there's a couple things that I want to do. First of all, I want to put a uh, uh, a header up here that has a few things on it. Uh, I can, uh, uh, you know, I have no headers or footers, no page numbers, nothing up here. So. Let me go up to uh, view my headers. Uh, in order to come back to this document, I have to give it a name. Now it kind of has a name already. Uh, I mean, it has the it has the name. I just called it markup. Uh, I could use that name. Uh, I could use this name down here that I made up. But I think what I'm I'm going to do is just do a simple um, uh, a naming of it. So I'm just going to call it document one. Maybe like this, document one, and uh, and then I'm going to want to enter, in, insert a um, uh, a page number in there someplace. Header footer. Uh, let me put my page numbers in here. Uh, uh, so I'll say page number and uh, do I want to put of pages? Sometimes that'll help. Whoops. I know there's a way to do this. Page number. Hmm. I can do it on a on a Windows a little easier. So, so this is good enough. Document one, page number one. Uh, Will will do me well enough. Let me let me get out of out of the header. Uh, so now I've got a page number and a doc, uh, document number that I can that I can always uh, go back to. So, uh, <clears throat> but I'm not quite there yet. Uh, I have um, uh, a lot of lines of text here to read and to to kind of go through. And when I'm down here in the middle of this document saying he has to get the wood outside, drag it in, uh, I want to be able to come back to that pretty darn easily. Uh, you know, I do have the search document, uh, which may be helpful, um, <clears throat> but we're doing this by hand. So um, uh, one of the things that we can do in uh, Microsoft Word, and whether you're working on a Mac or a, a Windows machine doesn't matter. And you can do this in uh, Apple's uh, Pages, and you can do it in OpenOffice or any of those kind of uh, any any uh, word processor. You're going to be able to do this. So, uh, in the page setup in Macintosh, you're going to find a place to find uh, the line numbers. Uh, so, uh, and there are several ways you can set up the, the line numbers. Let's go ahead and open up the whole line number uh, layout. Um, um, uh, key. Uh, let's see what it does for us. Uh, so you could 
start uh, at any place you want to do. Uh, say you wanted to start at a number, say this is document number 10, and, and you want to start at uh, 10,000 instead of at zero so that you can you can differentiate between it and some maybe some other documents. Uh, <clears throat> but that's not really um, uh, all that necessary for a small project. And mostly if you're going to be doing small projects where you've, you know, you've got uh, a half a dozen or a dozen uh, short transcripts and you're doing them by hand, uh, just having a document name and then the line numbers would be fine. So let me, let me go back to the basics. And we'll just put line numbers in. And we can uh, do it in several ways. We can do it continuously. So we can just, from the line number one all the way down to line number uh, whatever it is, 300 and 492 is the last line in this document. Um, 490, actually, there's some blanks. You'll see it counts blank lines as well. Uh, <clears throat> or we can uh, we can do it uh, by page, and you know we'll go up here and we'll see that at, at the beginning of each page the numbering restarts, and uh, sometimes if you want to you can in, in, insert section breaks which would be in between each uh, speaker. But that, that would begin a little, uh, just a little, I guess, obsessive uh, for our needs. So I'm going to stick with document one, I mean, with having my page, my numbering started at each page. And the reason that I'm going to do that is so that um, uh, um, um, when I go to look for for a, a, a document, I mean, when I go back to, to, to look at a quote and read it in context uh, the, uh, from a code that I've made, from a memo that I've made, uh, I want to be able to just simply go to the document one, go to page number uh, one, and go to line number you know 38 instead of having to scroll down through you know 500 lines. Uh, to find it, so because I don't know where fi line 500 is going to 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 fall on, uh, although I know how many lines per page there are, and I could do the math, but I want to make life a little bit easier for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, uh, pause a bit, print out a page or two of this, do a coding of it, and then uh, kind of show you the. The, uh, the the coding and um, kind of how I used it and and of course you know adapt this to whatever works best for you so I'm going to go ahead and pause all right back from doing my coding uh, didn't take too long <clears throat> so here's my original document I'm, I'm I guess I'm kind of done with it right now. And of course, remember, you know, if, if you've if you've got a uh, a um, if, you, if you don't mind working on a computer, you can always do word searching and making notes. But this is this is when you're just doing things, kind of the old the old school, and you like to go to the coffee house and write out in long form, and use use pieces of paper. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's get rid of that. Okay, so. And of course, you could use a legal pad for this too. Put these headings up at the top, in however you like. Um, so I, I just did this as a as a way to kind of keep myself organized. So I, I can get rid of that. So oh, uh, that's set up there for. Uh, so anyway, here's a couple pages that that I coded, and you can see on the first page I didn't do anything, you know, because because. If you're like me, a lot of the times when I print something out and I know I'm going to read it several times, I don't like to mark in it. I'm just kind of weird that way. Um, and um, uh, but other people are. Uh, but you know, for example, in my uh, uh, oh, I didn't scan in my coding memos. Hold on. Alrighty, I've got I've got my uh, coding sheet scanned in. Sorry, sorry for that delay. Um, so here's my coding sheet, and you can see on, on page one here, I've done all I've done is just scanned it in, and I haven't added anything to it. So, um, 
So uh, here's my scribblings, uh, and you can see how easy it is to to go from uh, you know making notes and memos uh, about your data uh, <coughs> to uh, uh, back to the original data. So so here's my code. So I, I, I have this code called needing guidance. So there there it is. I put a a gerund in it, the, the ing, so it's an active process. So, uh, <clears throat> and it's located in document one, page one, lines uh, 12 to 14. And uh, uh, and this is real proof. This little thing right here, this little demo that uh, qualitative research is messy business. All research is messy business. So, uh, this section and statement made me think about about several things, the importance of extended family, the naturalist of, of needing extended support. Uh, so let me go back and see what the heck I was talking about at that point because sometimes when you do write up it's days and days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks later and you don't really know what you were talking about. So I go back to uh, D1, P1, document 1, page 1, lines 12. So real easy to find. Document 1, page 1, Really easy to find. So if I if I was flipping through this in a stack of papers, it'd be real easy to go back and find this. So down here, line 12, this he's talking about uh, <clears throat> about uh, being rang, rambunctious and didn't have a dad, and I was raised by my mother, so it's hard for me to keep discipline. So th this guy's talking about his his need to be uh, guidance. He needs some guidance. He said discipline. I may even use his word uh, discipline. Um, in my go to, in my coding when I come back to it now, so I could just take my my um, uh, uh, pencil and uh, uh, and kind of just write that write that in, scratch out guidance and put in discipline. S C I P. I need to get one of those little tablets that works. I have one, but it doesn't work very well. So, so needing discipline. So I've, I've changed my code after I've gone back and read it. I may even put some stuff in here, blah, 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 blah. I may write in some more memos and notes. And so, um, so let, let me clear off that little bit of mess that I just made. And, and head on down here a little bit. So uh, <clears throat> the next one is uh, an example of uh, how it's possible to, to do more than one thing at, at a time with the same set of data. So I made two codes here. One I call making relations and one I call having relations. So related but somewhat similar uh, uh, processes. And you can see I started, made a mess here and put my codes in the wrong place. No big deal. I could have just written the, the location over here. It would have been obvious. Uh, uh, it's in document one, page one, lines 23 to 31. So I want to juxtapose the two ideas that are common in Native American families uh, and communal life, family and communal life, the distinction between having relatives and making relatives. So I'm just making myself a little note here of something to talk about. This made me think about something. It could be something that I could build into a, a whole section. Um, Okay, we'll come over here to page two in this uh, document that I remember I scanned this in, and and you can see this one isn't quite as uh, uh, pristine, and uh, some people would would be writing in the margins and doing all that kind of stuff, which is just fine. You brief notes, write in the margin, come in, and make your larger memos later. That's fine. Um, some people like to use uh, uh, highlighters with their coding, and that's perfectly acceptable if it works for you. It doesn't work for me. Um, uh, kind of takes away my opportunity to come back and and, um, and and get rid of something without having to print off a new piece of paper. So I've got a couple of highlighted sections in here. One didn't scan in very well uh, that I, I've got related to over here in, in um, uh, in my document, uh, in my my coding sheet, so so you can see it it, it becomes then even easier to go to uh, uh, 
document one, page two, and then uh, line 12 to, I mean, tw line 15 to 20, just by finding that pink. Um, and the nice thing about it is, uh, uh, say I'd set up a coding scheme ahead of time where I, I said, you know, anything related to alcohol abuse or drug abuse, I'm going to code in pink. Or anything related to prevention uh, or strengths or supports, I'm going to do in, 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 in pink. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, so what did I say here? This section made me think about the role of s sayings and homilies in everyday life. So, so even as I'm I'm reading this for the second time, I'm thinking, oh, okay. Well, I, I I've you know I've I've kind of stepped into some kind of a, uh, 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 area of psychology, um, you know, of linguistics and how linguistics and and the little messages we tell ourselves you know, uh, affects our worldview and kind of guides our, our process. You know, it's kind of the operating system of, 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 um, of the human mind is, is those thoughts that we have. And so, um, uh, so I, I could now come back and say, oh, I, I want to I change that code to something different. And, uh, or I may want to um, write a second, separate memo, or maybe I'll make a, uh, you know, a uh, note to myself, you know, go, go to the books, Bob, go to the books, go find out. Uh, so I'll, I'll just put it in library. Look at that. I happened to pick a color that matched my uh, color over here. So I got lucky. Uh, so uh, write a little note in here, library. Um, so I can come back and and go to the library or look up uh, look up uh, some of this something related to this and so I'd, I'd write down what that is and so so I'm starting to to see several roles of of coding one where I'm just coding within this one document uh, and now I'm starting to link what's happening in this document out to to the larger um, Canon or the larger professional uh, literature, um, the theories that, that are out there. Okay, let me come down to this um, to this final line down here, final bit of coding, uh, and you can see I've got a, a new date. Oh, even though today is still the 27th, uh, I wrote down the 28th uh, because it's kind of you know you want to keep track of you know, the progression of your thinking. So. And this one is a code that I called encouraging elders, and 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 again it, I put it in yellow. And so say somebody who, who likes to do color coding may decide, you know, I'm going to put all my my codes that have to do with um, uh, elders or uh, the impact of, of of social relations in yellow. Uh, so. <clears throat> It's your colors, your color codes. If you use color codes, be sure to to keep a code book of your color codes and what they mean, so that if somebody comes along and says, oh, "I don't believe your research," uh, you can say, "Yeah, well, I coded it this way. Here's my codes," and and um, they may still disagree with your analysis, but they'll have a hard time arguing with your process. And process is really what's important in qualitative research. So this is located in document one, page two. Of course, it's really easy to find because I know it's yellow. It's down here. Uh, and early one morning, you know, after we'd been sitting there all night, well, an elder who happened to be the name of, so that's where I got that from, and, and it went on. Um, uh, and in this section, this is my memo. Th this section is about the role of, of an encouraging elder uh, versus a rule maker. And then, and this is where I bring in some of my previous background research uh, before I, I, I went to these interviews. The expectation of the Native American church is that uh, males are singers. Uh, this way of encouraging versus making it a membership requirement, I didn't finish my thought because maybe I was in a hurry, maybe I was interrupted, maybe that's all I could think of at that particular appointment. Actually, the reason was I just wanted to get back to this podcast. Uh, so, um, when I come back to it at a later date and I read that, and it's like, oh, I need to expand on that thought. And so, so uh, I can then later go through and uh, 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 
find everything that's encoded in yellow uh, and start to put them together. So how does the role of uh, family supports uh, help in, in, in the prevention of substance abuse and, and this group of people? And, <clears throat> and also, um, uh, and this, this kind of goes back to the, to the reason why I like to keep my uh, originals original without a lot of scribbling marking on them, or really none, is say you're kind of starting off cold, or, or your, your research was going down one line, but you're really discovering this other thing that's going on. So, so here we've got, we're, we're, here we're finding something about, about um, um, uh, elders and relationships. Well, we had talked about it a little bit up here, and so uh, about the importance of re making relations. And, and with uh, uh, some types of qualitative research, particularly something like a grounded theory, you really allow your knowledge that you pick up in previous in, in encounters to build your next analysis. So, so <clears throat> what one would do when they start to see this this role of, of relationships start to develop, they would say, oh, you know, I need to go back and really look through my data again with the idea that there's uh, um, uh, a piece that I'm missing around the importance of, of, uh, of relationship and uh, or, or look at things in, in a new light. So, so we go back to this previous one, this preventing alcohol abuse code and uh, it was down here in pink, the upside of, of color that's really easy to find. Uh, the downside is if this, if this whole document was coded with highlighters, it becomes quite a mess. Um, so I don't work, that's why I don't work well with coders, because I, I kind of code from the, the point of view that everything that your participants tell you is important stuff. So every line should be color coded in here, and that really makes for a hard document to sort through for me. Other people, they love it. Uh, so. So I couldn't come back and look again at this whole document, I mean this whole statement again, and reread it. I'm not going to just read the one little code, but I'm going to read the whole paragraph or the whole section. And I see that he's talking about elders and, and the importance of elders, and, and uh, even there's something in there about interacting with elders and kind of how they work. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting deeper and deeper and deeper into, into this data, and I really haven't know, done more than, I mean, I, I've already coded this seven, seven years ago or something like that once for, for a different project, but here I am looking at it now and I go, wow, I can look at this data again and kind of recode it and, um, and make it into something new. So, uh, and that's the way uh, 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 qualitative coding works. You know, I'm starting to build on my knowledge uh, through going through the process. Now, I can go back to this original data, I'm much more informed having gone through my whole process and look at it brand new and say, wow, there's a lot of things that I missed here. And uh, there's a whole new level of meaning that um, I didn't report on, so I, it just makes me exciting to think about. So so anyway, that's my, um, my quick and dirty uh, report on how to do coding kind of old style. So this way, for those of you who really like to think out loud or think while writing, you know, there's a lot of people that think that way. And, and, and actually writing is a good way to slow down your thoughts to, 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 to get something out of you. Instead of, you know, we, we can sit around and drink coffee and you know, think big thoughts, but that writing down uh, will really slow them down. And I seem to prefer it over, over sometimes, over sitting in front of a, of a computer because uh, I'll have a thought, and you know, one, I may not have a computer nearby. Two, uh, that thought may be gone uh, before I uh, am able to even open up the the the, the, the application to to write it down. Um, so, uh, just some things to think about. Final little piece around coding that I want to. Uh, um, uh, talk about is 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 up here. Remember, I said in this um, document, I've even got the transcript recording written down, so it goes back to its original audio source. 
And what did I do with my audio source? Oh, it's in here. So I've still got that right there, that very same document uh, that I can sit down and listen to. Oh. Things on that small talk. <laughs> so, you know, that, so. Oh, man, you is that. So, here, you know, this is a, an hour long business. recording. Uh, um, and. How, how often or when do they do the It would be. During the meeting. Pretty easy to do yeah. to you know, put some time what I'm memos to get is in here as well. General information for everybody as mm -hmm. and. You know, that's and part if you've of got a transcript of an interview, mm -hmm. you just PO, download it you know, into your iPod, or maybe you do a recording with your phone. You've got amazing technology these you days. Know, uh, you can listen to it over and over and over, and, and maybe you'll hear things you didn't hear before. And in fact, you can use this um, in the, exactly the same way with an audio recording. So you've got your audio recording here, you're listening to it, you pause it. You write down your note. Bah, 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 bah. You know when was this? This was at. Oops, where did my uh, where did my window go? Oh, I lost it. Way to go, Bob. This should be a thing school. Right here, so I can pause it. And I can say, oh, okay, there was uh, somebody was laughing about something. Uh, and I can say, where was I at when that happened? I was at seven seconds. So let's get something. Rufus Yelly, I think he was almost 300 pounds. And he was sick. I mean, two people carried him in there. I mean, that was drug him into the teaching to set him down. The, the meeting was for him to get well. And we had that meeting in, in that morning. He was standing outside shaking hands with people as they came out. Okay, so so that particular little 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 snippet, uh, you didn't listen to it all, uh, but it was it was dramatic. I got lucky in, in, in catching that one. It was it was about somebody who had uh, who was very ill and, and they put up a, a, a church service for him in order to Native American church service in order to do a healing and. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, and then at the end we hear that he's up and about and he's standing outside and happy and shaking hands and doing all this kind of stuff. And so, so and that's at pay, that's at minute 18 minutes and 25 seconds. And you'd probably want to go back and listen to it a couple times and find out exactly when it starts and exactly when it ends, because as we move more and more into audiovisual presentation of of uh, of information. Uh, uh, some of this kind of stuff is is much more available than than other stuff. You know, I mean, I can I can tell you a story about um, uh, my crazy dog, <laughs> or I can show a picture or a movie of my crazy dog being crazy. So my dog likes to chase the uh, the water, the uh, sprinkler, and uh, can't get her to take a bath. But when I want to give her a bath, uh, she will just gladly chase the sprinkler all around. So that's Lucy. So all right. So that's enough now on coding, uh, writing memos, linking them back to your original data using using your 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 word processing program to put in a document name, a page number, and then uh, lines, uh, line numbers in order that you can take a coding sheet and uh, write your memos, make your codes, and, and still track all that back to the original source, either by using uh, uh, page number, line numbers, uh, document numbers, or uh, by using um, um, highlight markers uh, as a way to kind of assist your 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 coding. So uh, I hope you, hope this is helpful to you, and we will we'll see y'all in class.